It's early January 2011, and California condors are gathering on the Vermilion Cliffs of northern Arizona. As breeding season starts, these social birds return to the area from which most were first released to the freedom of the skies. Of course, nostalgia isn't what draws condors back to the Vermilion Cliffs. It's a reliable food source, courtesy of the Peregrine Fund's condor recovery team. The team tries to lure the entire Arizona-Utah population of condors to these remote, juniper-dotted cliffs twice a year in an extraordinary effort to capture every single bird and test its blood. Biologists are looking for sick birds, hoping to treat them and perhaps prevent their death. We're up here today as part of our seasonal trapping and testing, uh, where we handle the birds for several reasons, uh, one of which is to check their transmitters to make sure they have functional batteries and that the transmitters are working. And the other is to do a general health check where we will um, handle the birds and, and just see how they're doing and draw blood samples, test their lead levels. If they're not too high, they'll be released back to the wild. Uh, if they're high enough uh, um, to suggest they might be in a little trouble with the lead poisoning, then, then we'll take them down and treat them. Sick birds are taken to the barn, a big metal shed that's been modified for use as a condor ER not far from the release pen atop the Vermilion Cliffs. Here, biologists use an x-ray machine and other sensitive equipment to further test and treat the birds for lead poisoning. The barn and its equipment were paid for in part by the Arizona Game and Fish Department's Heritage Fund. So if a bird should show a high blood lead level, then we take them down to our facility um, and begin treatment. And it's the same treatment used in humans. It's two injections a day, except that in humans it's an IV, for a five-day period of calcium EDTA. And what that does, uh, the root word for, for chelation is keel, and it means claw, and it actually binds to, molecularly binds to the lead, and then it can be passed through the kidneys normally, as, as uh, other excrement would. Most condors that come to the barn undergo one round of chelation then their blood lead level drops, their overall health improves, and they are returned to the wild. But for a 15-year-old male, number 122, treatment and release won't happen so quickly. I'd like to say it was more of an unusual case, but unfortunately it's almost a, a, a yearly happening where we have a bird that's sick enough the lead begins to paralyze their digestive system. And for my my little understanding of the way lead works is it's stored in the body as if it were calcium and calcium is a major neurotransmitter and it's utilized as uh, it facilitates other neurotransmitters so uh, all this all the communication in the cells so if lead is stored in those receptor sites where calcium is supposed to be then it basically dumbs down the system and paralyzes the system and the first place it reveals itself is in the digestive system. The process of moving food from the crop, which is where they, when they come into a carcass and they gorge themselves, their food is in a crop. It's a big storage area so they can come in, feed and get out. And then they go sit somewhere safe from predation and allow that food to process through their system. Their digestive tract, their gut is very small and so the food is slowly released into the digestive system. Well, when that digestive system becomes paralyzed, that food's no longer passing through. So what happens is that crop full of, of carrion begins to rot. If we don't get our hands on it, the bird starves to death while continually feeding and doesn't get the benefit of that food and, and ultimately uh, could die from it if the lead levels are high enough and the paralysis is extensive enough. The next day, Chris drives Condor 122 south to the Oak Creek Small Animal Facility in Sedona. There the bird will be transferred to Dr. Kathy Orr of the Liberty Wildlife Rehabilitation Foundation. They get right down to business x-raying 122. They find no lead fragments, which is a good sign. Chris hates to lose any condor, but he's especially concerned about this bird, one of the oldest males in the Arizona population and the offspring of the last wild condor caught in 1987. Condor 122 has produced a wild-hatched chick, only the second one in the Arizona Recovery Program. Dr. Orr will have to take 122 back to Phoenix and perform surgery to remove the rotting contents of the bird's crop. The regimen is stressful for a wild condor, and this is the second time 122 has been through it. Unfortunately, that year that, he was, that we caught him late, uh, 119, his mate had laid an egg and was incubating it down at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. He came in to feed and we found that he had um, 
very high levels of lead and, and was really debilitated. So we took him down. All the while, she's sitting at the nest waiting for him to return. So he didn't return and she had to abandon that attempt that year and they didn't produce that year. And that was the only year that they didn't produce. She later died of lead poisoning. Um, so he has since repaired and produced young with another female. Um, so we're hope, hoping that we can get him treated and get him back out there. Three months after 122 was captured, transported, and treated, he is cleared by Dr. Orr to return to the Vermilion Cliffs. That's when it's most rewarding, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, you'd, I wouldn't say you develop a relationship, but, you know, you go back out to the wild and you see that bird again, and then you see it again, and you see it the next year, and you treat it the next year, and you treat it the next year, and you treat it the next year, and you, the next year, and you think, man, if people only knew how tough these guys were. So I think my, my admiration and respect for the, for the species is, is probably uh, much more well-defined now. Yeah, it's kind of uh, nostalgic, I guess. You see the birds come in, you're like, hey, there's 122, you know, there's the old male. Wow, we're treating for lead again. <laughs> so yeah, it's on both hands, the highs and lows of, of uh, being proud that they're still out there and yet being frustrated that uh, they're still going through the same problems, you know. The Vermilion Cliffs is a stark 3,000 foot escarpment of layered red sandstone. The gentle beauty and harsh ruggedness of this place reveal how the extremes of nature can flourish side by side. And so it is with the California condor. An ancient bird that had disappeared from the Arizona skies fights to reclaim a foothold in this unique land. While its only hope and greatest threat both lie in the hands of man. <laughs>